on this episode of Unleash Your Audacious Confidence, we are going to be talking about being brave, stepping out with bravery in your career. So stick around. You're not going to want to miss our guest on this show. See you in a minute. Welcome to Unleash Your Audacious Confidence on Win Win Women TV. This show is all about sharing the tips, tools, and techniques that will allow you to step boldly in the direction of your dreams despite your feelings, fears, or past failures. To imagine what's possible for yourself and live the life you deserve. Was I a little dramatic there in the beginning? <laughs> Hi, I'm Alicia Curie, your host today on Unleash Your Audacious Confidence here on Win Win Women TV. And yes, we're going to be talking all about bravery today. But before we get to our guest and our topic, I just want to encourage you and invite you to check out Win Win Women and the content that they have over there. There is so much wonderful uh, show hosts and topics that you can really sink your teeth into. Uh, you know, Win Win Women is a platform for women, by women, and it's a global community. So if you're on Roku, if you're on Amazon, if you're on Apple TV, you can find this Win Win Women channel. You can find this network there as well. And you can also find it on any podcast platform that you listen to. Find Win Win Women. Just search for Win Win Women TV and you will find our platform. Now, on to the show. We have an amazing guest with us today and we're going to talk about your career. Like bravery is a career skill. And I want to bring up my guest, Nicole Trek Steinbach. Steinbach. Did I get that right? Done. Wonderful. Uh, done. Yeah. <laughs> so Nicole is here with us. And uh, I did a preview and I said, you spend part of the time in the United States and part of the time in Germany. And so Steinbach, Steinbach. German. <laughs> and so I'm so glad I got that right. And Nicole, share with our audience a little bit about yourself and how you came to this revelation of bravery in your career. Well, first of all, just thank you so much for having me join your show. I've seen a number of the episodes and it's just a delight. The last, um, the beauty episodes that you did were so helpful. Okay. So <laughs> <Yeah>. my, <laughs> my name is Nicole Trick Steinbach and I was born in Southern Ohio to a single mom and becoming more brave was something that opened up so many opportunities for me. And um, I didn't know that until much later because I spent most of my time moving away from things versus mm -hmm. towards things. Oh, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. And so I went to college, graduated college. Um, I am 43 years old. So I graduated right after September 11th. The job market we went into was yeah. not fantastic kind of like right now in 2024 yeah got the opportunity wow. to move to Germany ended up living in Germany for 13 years and built a career there in technology so this young woman who had never really spent time with people who worked at massive corporations ended her corporate career as a global senior director wow. I went to 25 different countries for work and learned all about this amazing function called change management, which is the people side of project management, essentially. Yeah. As I was building my career and as I was choosing to become an entrepreneur at some point, I realized that there were three things I really needed to get very good at, especially as a woman and mm -hmm. as an immigrant. Number one, clarity. I have to know what I want and what I don't want. And I have to be willing to share it with other people. Oh, that's so big. Right? Clarity, yes. What you want and what you don't want, especially in a job situation. Oh, yeah. well, and what I'm learning right now is that that's also important in my interpersonal relationships. I have to know what doesn't work for me and what it does work. And then I actually have to tell people what I need and what I can't accept. 
So I think it's also mm-hmm. turning our personal lives in a fulfilling lifestyle. The second part is momentum, which I'm sure most of your watchers are people who know how to get things done. Yes. <laughs> but when I talk about momentum and the bravery of momentum, it's feeling your feelings as well as getting things done. Mm. Right? Because it only shows up when we feel insecure or worried or excited or fearful, right? We have maybe a little bit of trepidation. That's where bravery becomes a skill that you can utilize and you can build. Yeah. So you have to build momentum with that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. The last part is accountability, which is two of and for self. Nobody likes accountability. What are you talking about? Nobody (laughs) likes accountability, Nicole. Well, and this is the thing, right? Most women and you with your identity more, even more than me, right? Mm -hmm. We thought that accountability means hold him accountable. That's control. Mm -hmm. That's governance, right? Right. Accountability is to of and for oneself. So I said that I wanted this promotion. I did all of the work and the discomfort to get that promotion you said you were going to do these things that hasn't come through. Now I need to take action. Mm. That's the skill of bravery, right? It's one Mm. of the biggest, and I didn't have the language for it at the time, but it's one of the biggest reasons why, for example, I hit T4, which is a director level equivalent in technology when I was 30 and I was very visibly pregnant. Why I got to work on these major projects, why I got to relocate to the United States when it was time for my family to experience that Mm -hmm. and why I was able to craft a business that fulfills me and is satisfying for me without burning out again, right? Mm-hmm. That's my story. I now coach women in technology and I do organizational change management consulting all over the world for technology companies. And I have a podcast. Yay. When we share stories, like you've had people on your show show who are sharing their stories and they're like, oh my gosh, that could that's my story or mm-hmm. that could be possible for me. Or I, I know have- someone who's going through this, right? And I can share it with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to, first of all, ask you to, because you went through these three phenomenal tips through the, through the lens of bravery. Uh, I want you to, to just give us a definition of what you mean by bravery in your career and that it's a skill um, so that, because I'm going to circle back to these three things that I wrote down that you said that were so powerful. I love it. Okay. So an example of bravery for women in technology could be, could be because bravery is always unique to your situation, Mm -hmm. but it could be, for example, saying to your male colleague, Hey, I think there might be a pay disparity here. Would you be open to having a conversation? Mm-hmm. Another moment of bravery could be in saying, yes, I will take that stretch role. I will travel to that place or I will work on that product that I don't know a lot about. Or it could be, thank you so much for the opportunity. Hard pass. Mm. A very often step for my clients, because most of my clients come come to me because they are stressed. They're mm-hmm. working 50, 55, 60, sometimes even more hours. Wow. They're wondering, am I under leveled? Am I underpaid? Right. Mm. So a moment of bravery for a lot of my clients is literally logging off their laptop, signing out of the apps on their phone when they decided to do so. Notice I did not say at 5 p.m. Yeah. When they decide to do so. They decide yeah. to Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, that's something that can be taught for sure. Right. Um, I had someone tell me today because um, they, they're moving into another level and I don't coach. They're, they're a friend, not, not a client. And someone told them, well, you're going to have to stretch and step up and and do this type of business development like you're going to have to make the phone calls and you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone and do these things and she's like to tell you the truth that's a that's a no i i i i'm yeah. i'm not going to do that um yep. so 
like as you're talking about clarity, which was the first thing, what's the difference between like what what she said to me? She's like, no, I'm not going to do it. And yeah. everything in me wanted to tell you, but you know what? This is your business and you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone and do some of this work. What's the difference between clarity and resistance that's hurting you? Like, ooh, okay. Ooh, that's <laughs> such a good question because I actually would take that to a, a slightly different area mm -hmm. when coaching someone and they're, and I'm saying to them, okay, so you have now stepped into, I'm going to take an example far away from what you just said. Um, mm -hmm. stepped into a global leadership role. You're now working across time zones. You're going to have to be a lot more flexible about when you're available. You accepted a global role. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this is one of the consequences, accountability, right? Right. And they're like, no, absolutely not. Very frequently. My question is, what are you protecting yourself from? Because resistance is most often a protective mechanism. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the answer is, I'm scared I'll be the silly American, or I'm scared I won't speak English good enough, or I'm scared I'll get burnt out again, or I'm scared I'll be like my dad who was never around for my children. Mm -hmm. When we get into what is that protecting you from? How is that protective for you? Or if someone's like nothing, then my next question is, okay, great. How did that type of resistance make you successful in the past? And that's where we can begin to have that clarity mm -hmm. to make those changes and the momentum feel some of the like, oh, I really don't want to make cold calls. I really yeah. don't. Okay. 2%. I like to talk about 2% shift. I used yeah. to talk about the 1% shift, but I have mostly ambitious clients and they're like, absolutely not. We're doing it all. <laughs> so I can convince them on the 2%. Sometimes they're like, no, we're doing 5% at a time. I'm like, okay, great. That's your brain. Yeah. Right? Try, right. But those 2% shifts, right? So, okay. Then what I would say to my client, what I would say to your friend is whatever their answer was, let's say that their answer is, um, you know, I, for example, me, I have a stutter, so I mm -hmm. don't hold calls. Um, because I get very nervous and then, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So how could we build your comfort level to bravely pick up that phone also with a stutter and let's experience it. So go ahead and make that one call next week, just one call yeah. and then evaluate it. What worked, what didn't work? What do you want to do differently next time? Mm -hmm. And the last thing I would say is, you know, there are as the Germans like to say, there are many roads to Rome. Mm -hmm. All of them go to the South, but there are many roads to Rome. And so one of the things I do try to bravely offer to my clients is your career is not going to look like anyone else's career. And so my business strategy and my business tactics don't look like many other people's business strategies. Mm -hmm. That's great. Because yeah. I'm here to be you know, a Barbie or a really bad Ken knockoff. <laughs> right. So yeah. when, when do you, how could you know what you want? I mean, when is that point that, you know, all right, this is what I want. Is it always there inside of you and you're just afraid to say it out loud mm -hmm. or does it like from your experience with your clients, or does it build upon something else? And you say, you know what? Yeah, I think I really do want that. Where yeah. do you think that comes most people where it comes from for them? Yeah. So I think the luckiest of the lucky actually know what they want right from the get go. Yeah. I, you know, I have one. Like when there. the yeah. Olympics is going on, like a lot oh. of these Olympians from childhood, they were like, I want to do that. And right. they make the sacrifices and they do the things and right. So they know from five years old, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Most, most of them, they're, they're like, I want to do that. And some yeah. of them, the parents push them into it, you yeah. know, but, but a lot of them, the great ones, they had that from the inside, from young. And 
So my, my, the back of my, so I'm looking at her right now is Simone. Mm -hmm. She is one of my bravest role models. How mm -hmm. brave do you have to be to be at the top of your game and say, you know what? I don't feel well. I'll catch you next time mm -hmm. in an environment where perhaps not you get seriously injured. You're out a new yeah. star. I mean, she's a century talent, right? <laughs> right. And she has shared on numerous podcasts because I've listened to almost all of them. Yeah. Uh, but there were many times when she had to turn to commitment versus desire. And that's another thing. So for the people who are lucky enough to know right from the beginning, like gymnasts, mm -hmm. there are still going to be those really important moments where they have to look at accountability and say, who do I want to be? Yeah. Because. Absolutely. This it in this moment, I want to go part of a sophomore class, right? And instead, I'm waking up at four to get to the gym. Correct. Yeah, there's that moment of, and that's what that's what makes the difference between whether or not you end up in the N NFL, in the NBA, on the gold medal, you know, on the stand of the gold medal, is that level of commitment that and that accountability to yourself, because it's not to anyone, it's to yourself, because you made that goal. That's so right. it's the accountability to yourself to say when no one else is watching, I'm going to get up and go do it anyway. So right. yes, absolutely. So there are those moments when you have to like say, oh, yes. Can yeah. I just have the donut? Can I, can I just have the donut yeah. <laughs> and sleep and, in? And there are, there are times where all of us need to quit temporarily or permanently. We just need to quit. She quit that tournament, right? Mm -hmm. She stepped back because she needed it, right? There was a moment in my career because I didn't know what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to make money. I grew up without a lot of money. I wanted right? to be, okay? <laughs> like how did how did this humanities person who's actually, I have a bachelor's in writing, okay? <laughs> like how did I end up in tech of all things? And it's because um, the Department of Computer Science, because I had to work my way through college, the Department of Computer Science paid Two, two dollars more an hour. Oh, in 99. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I will work for you. And that's how I got into tech. But in various moments of my career, I was like, ooh, I don't want that. And mm -hmm. ooh, that sounds a little bit more interesting. And so at one point in my career, I had to take a step back because the path I was on, the next step of growth looked horrible. Right. It looked boring. So I took a horizontal move that actually took me down a layer and then my career completely shot up. Mm. So for my clients, most of them arrive to work with me saying, I just don't want this. Mm -hmm. I don't want this. We, I don't know what it, what the next step is, but I know I don't want this. Yeah. And that's some places that you have to start from. What don't you want? What don't you want to keep experiencing? Exactly. And then you can start once you clear that away, then you can start looking for what you do want. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that That's is powerful. It, it is such a it's such an introspective, especially now. Right. So tech mm -hmm. has just been decimated by layoffs, especially corporate tech, large scale tech. And even the women are about 20 to 30 percent, depending on region percent of the population, women have been impacted up to 65% more than men. So there's significantly more men, and yet we're somehow impacted by layoffs more. It's almost like there's a system happening. I don't know what, well, yeah, there was this movie. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other, that's a whole other episode to dive into that, so that dis, disproportionate, yeah. um, disparity in everything it's in everything. It's in everything in the pay the pay gap and yeah. layoffs and you know leave and yes and so right now a lot of the people I'm working with or that I'm talking about working with or who approach me and want to work together but actually what they need is therapy to deal with the pain of being laid off after done having done an amazing job working over mm -hmm. time and yeah. bringing big sales or delivering big products it's like when someone is experiencing trauma, a coach is inappropriate, period. You need mm -hmm. to work with somebody who, you know, I do not have the, I do not have the education or the experience that a therapist has. And I think we need to get a lot more mature about that. 
Mm-hmm. The people who come to me and are either already working with a therapist or they're about to start, or they've cleaned that up and now they're looking towards the future. It's like, okay, what about this was awesome that you want to take forward? Most of the time it's like the pay and the impact. Okay. What do you not want to take forward? I don't want to work with a boss who talks down about women. I don't want to work in a product team that's in seven different locations. I don't want it. Right. It's like, okay, great. Now we're going to go out and just start talking to people. To the mm-hmm. point about your friend and making phone calls, regardless if yeah. you're an entrepreneur or you have like an in corporate career or a nonprofit career, politics, no matter where you are, you got to talk to people. You got to talk to the people. You got to <laughs> get over it. You got to get over it. Yeah. And That's then- being brave. Listen, it's recognizing <laughs> that I have this anxiety around something or I have this trepidation and being brave enough to explore what that is and how can I move past it? That's to me is, is being brave and that's developing that skill um, of recognizing it's that self-awareness skill, recognizing uh, when that's happening to you. I have um, two colleagues that do a lot of um, somatic work, a lot of body work. They say that you know, the body is the subconscious mind. So when that shows up, it shows up in your body, like you feel it. And you need to start recognizing that feeling. Like, where do you feel it? Do you feel it tension in your head, in the back of your neck, in your your shoulders, you know, in your stomach? Like, where do you feel every time that happens where start recognizing that pain, and then realizing that that pain is not a pain, it's actually a, a resistance yeah. that you need to work through. Yeah. I know exactly where mine shows up. It shows up right in the, in the, my, between my shoulder blades. Anytime I get that pain in my shoulder blades, it's like, what am I worrying about? What am I resisting? Where is it? What is it? And, and my brain starts searching for what that thing is so that I can clear it out. Cause I'm like, no amount of massage or heat pad or any, we'll get rid of it. Cause it's not a physical pain. It's an emotional subconscious pain. And it's always in the same place. Yep. I know mine is always in the same place. Oh, oh that's as I feel that I'm like, okay, there's something coming something somewhere that's in my subconscious. That's being like, ah, attack that's right now. Really fascinating. Mm-hmm. So mine definitely moves around a bit. And especially because I, I coach women in tech. So a lot of my clients are neurodiverse. Yeah. For, for a number of my clients who've been taught to shove it down and mask and pretend to be normal, actually identifying, okay, great. So your boss said that to you. How did your body respond? Mm-hmm. What happened with your body? Oh, you curled your toes. That's so interesting. Is that the name for you? Anger. Interesting, right? So that people can just start to identify what's going on with them has been really helpful for some of my clients, right? Mm -hmm. When do you get excited? And and sometimes I need to also ask them, you know, okay, feels like fear. I hear you. Like your heart is racing. you're, You're breathing a little bit different. Your hands are getting tight. Your shoulders are going down. But like, is that, is that the proper name? And sometimes you're like, actually, I'm excited. Or mm-hmm. act- I think that I'm both this and this. And for me specifically, and, and maybe for other people out there, like you work through things and you leave it behind and that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Me, uh, there are certain patterns that I have, certain situations, like for example, giving a presentation in German. My German's great, but it is not perfect. And those verbs at the end of the sentence, I'm sorry, but sometimes I just forget. Okay, my mind is going, I'm ready. Right. So I will always feel a little bit of like, Mm-hmm. Did I remember the verb? Mm-hmm. Did I get the article correctly? And what I what I need to do in those situations is instead of like trying to like just it not be there, be like, oh, that's part of it. But the fact that I can do this at all, I'm gonna bring some pride into this situation. Wow, I learned to speak German as an adult and I can give a presentation in it. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And I feel a little icky right now. I feel really icky. Did they understand me? Oh, wait, I'm also, the, you know. And so sometimes it's just letting it come in with me and letting it be there with me and not making it wrong. That helps me yeah. brave, like become more brave, right? Mm-hmm. 
and and acknowledging it to others as well like you said in the first thing you know tell people say listen i'm doing this presentation i'm doing it in german you're going to get most of it i'm that i may mess up i may mess up but yeah. you know what let's just have fun with it yeah um and that way i i i tend to um when i give talks and i have my powerpoint presentation no matter how many times I've looked over that PowerPoint presentation, there's always a typo somewhere that I've missed. <laughs> there's all, and I have other people look it over and there's always, and there's that <laughs> one person in the audience that will fixate on my typo. I know. I know. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, you had a typo. I'm like, yeah, but did you get, did you understand what I was talking about? Did you get the message? That's okay, right. great. Yeah. Right. Let's focus on that. <laughs> A while underneath my name and my corporate, this was like for a very little while because I had a few colleagues that were uh, very detail oriented. Let's put it that way. And they'd be like, oh, there's a typo. Oh, there's a typo. So I put as my title, Empress of, Tito of Typos. Empress yeah. of Typos. And like, let's move on, please. Yes, let's please move on. I understand. I get it. I get we, it. We understand each other. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. But, but you know, but I had to get clear. Because at first I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. They noticed, yada, yada. You know, and I was already really high up in the hierarchy and that would throw me. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? Then I needed to get clear. And then I needed to just, you know, I talked to one of my mentors and I was like, this is really pissing me off. I'd like to confront them. And she said to me, wise woman that she is, what outcome do you want? And I said, I want to feel okay about the situation because I don't have time and I'm not willing to work the 70 hours that would be required to ensure no email have typos in them. And she's like, great. What actually do you need to do for that outcome? And I was like, oh, I need to remember I have a sense of humor and not take this damn seriously, you know? And so then, right, that's momentum. And then into accountability when the person's like, yeah, like, okay, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Let's move on. So, yeah, um, I love number two, uh, momentum, and we're running out of time, so we don't really have a lot of time to talk about momentum, but feeling the feelings and getting things done, uh, that's so important that we understand that we can have those feelings. I remember when my children were younger, um, mm -hmm. they're adults, most of them adults now, but they would get upset about stuff and we'll, we'll be walking and they'll stop to cry. I'm like, you can cry and walk. Like, I don't mind you crying. It's, you could keep crying because yeah. I didn't believe that I needed to shush them all the time. I'm like, feel your feelings, cry, but we're moving. So we're keeping momentum going. That's right. I, no, I wish that I had known you earlier because it took <laughs> a long time to realize that. Um, but yeah, I think that that's one of the most challenging elements for and I wonder what this is like because you did so many like beauty pageants and media and things like that I wonder if there's a difference when it's like somewhat of a female industry versus like so predominantly male it's feeling the feelings is perceived as weak a lot mm -hmm. of the times and people will be like no 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 then I'll lose my status or my authority or whatever and I have not had that experience when I finally allowed myself to show excitement show joy show sadness show frustration I think it's a perception that we have yeah it's a perception because um even you know in the beauty industry fashion and beauty fashion at certain levels is male at the top levels oh. it's still men okay that yeah, I was in the fashion industry and in, and in, in the nineties, and so um, and I worked for a a uh, a huge um, what do you call them shopping mall where they had shopping malls all over the country. Okay, and they were run by men, so it's it was still like a lot of males in those positions. Correct. Um, but even, yeah, and in beauty, I think it's just a perception that we have that that emotions equal weakness for men and women. Like there's just this perception. Well, we've also men, men aren't allowed to show feelings either. You know, well, as long as it's not anger. Anger is well, not so yeah, like it's yeah, fine, but not yeah. not the <laughs> not right? the weepy feelings. 
or the excitement, like what excitement. Yeah. I was like, wow, well, you got the promotion or woohoo, the product, right? I had to learn I, that, you yeah. know, as a Caribbean person, we didn't, we didn't show a lot of that type of excitement either in my household. So I had to learn to, to celebrate and congratulate myself for some, and I, it's still a journey I have to keep learning, you know, to celebrate, like I would write a book best-selling author is like, okay, what's next? And I'm, and I don't take the time to like celebrate that and feel really, you know, accomplished in that. So yeah, it's, it's, I think it's just perception of culture and what we think we're supposed to do with the feelings. I love that you said that about continuing to grow. Cause one of the things I love about the skill of bravery and all of the components that we've talked about, and we talked a lot about feeling. So I think we yeah. got momentum cleared up Yeah, uh, is that it's always a spiral, right? Like mm-hmm. loop back to practice that skill. And there's always a minute growth. Maybe we feel it. Maybe it's a leap. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's suddenly super easy to have a crucial conversation with someone to say, hi, I need to have an important conversation with you. We might feel uncomfortable during this. Here's my topic, right? Or it might be really, really small, which is like, I didn't cry until I was all the way into the bathroom this time versus in the hallway, right? <laughs> so we're all looping as yeah. we build the spiral of every skill that we build, including bravery. And I just think that that's one of the coolest things about being human. I love it. And that's a perfect way to end our talk today. Um, share with people how they can reach you, how can they can get a hold of you and learn more about you and your podcast. Oh, awesome. So Nicole at tricksteinbach.com. I'm on LinkedIn a lot, Nicole Trick Steinbach. I'm literally the only one on Google because Nicole, Tr- Nicole Steinbach is a dime a dozen. So Nicole Trick Steinbach. And my podcast is called Build Your Brave Career. And um, we just hit the top 10% of podcasts globally, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. (laughs) My Oprah shake. Yeah. (laughs) Congratulations. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nicole. And I want to just encourage you all that are listening, watching, that you... You know, I always say this at the end of the show, but I want you to really be bold and be brave and do one thing, one thing this week to step out, or maybe two, because we talk about 2%, two things this week to step out with audacious confidence. And I will see you next time. This is Alicia Curry. I'll see you next time on another episode of Unleash Your Audacious Confidence here on Win Win Women TV. Bye, everyone.